Today we continue to talk about the new man and in particular we look at the question who is the new man. Just to recap what we talked about the last two times, God is the one who creates the new man in us and it's our responsibility to nourish the new man. Our conduct in that is essential. It manifests actually the new man. The new man reconciles us with other men, but also with God, horizontal and vertical. And the new man is circumcised of heart. The new man is the new covenant man. And it is our choice whether or not to adopt him. So who is the new man? <clears throat> so far the new man is abstract. It's a representation of our new nature. Uh, an external expression of an internal change. And we already read the other time that in baptism the old man is crucified with Christ. And the new man is resurrected. Created. Paul writes something similar to the Galatians. In Galatians 3 verse 27. He writes, for as many of you as have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. Now remember that we spoke about putting on the new man. And here it speaks about putting on Christ. It's the same word used for putting on, the word uh, endio. And um, we looked at the, the meaning of that word before, but one of its meanings is to sink into. It's to put on, put on your clothes, but also to sink into. So we sink into Christ as we sink into the waters of baptism. And when Paul writes this to the Galatians writer in the next verse, uh, verse 28, he, um, he speaks of the reconciliation. He says that there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Note that Paul gives the same pattern in Colossians 3, verses 10 and 11. He read them also the other time. It says there, And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge, after the image of him that created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. So to the Galatians he writes, put on Christ, all are one in Christ. And to the Colossians he writes, put on the new man, all are one in Christ. It's obvious, Christ is the new man. We saw the other time the importance of our conduct, our walk. In his epistle to the Romans, Paul brings it all together. In Romans 13 verses 12 through 14. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly, as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provisions for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. It speaks here back to back about our conduct, our walk, and about putting on Jesus. It shows again that Jesus is the new man. Or as he puts it uh, in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 47, the second man, the Lord from heaven. So in Galatians 3 verse 27, Paul says we put on, and Dio, put on Christ at our baptism as we sink into the water it surrounds us. Similarly, if we put on clothes, they surround us. We are in the water as we are in the clothes. In other words, if we put on Christ, we are in Christ. However, 
in other places we read how Christ is in us. For example, Colossians 1 verse 27, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. And in Galatians 2 verse 20, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And in Romans 8 verse 10, And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, etc. Christ be in you. So how can Christ be in us and we in Christ at the same time? Is it possible? Yes, it is possible. Jesus tells us that himself. He says in uh, John 14, verse 20, At that day you shall know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. He's not describing uh, a paradox, an impossible situation, but rather a perfect and total unity. Let me illustrate that with, uh, with this uh, glass of water. This uh, represents the true Christian, and the water inside is his mind. Okay. And then we have this jug, which represents Christ. And the water inside is the mind of Christ. So if we now pour the mind of Christ inside the true Christian, like this, what we see is no difference. We cannot see where the mind of the Christian ends and where the mind of Jesus starts. It seems to us as one body of water in this case. So it's a, a thorough commingling of minds. This is the ideal picture. I say it's the ideal picture. None of us is there yet. But it should be um, impossible to distinguish our mind from that of Christ. That is, that is what we aim for. And we are urged to, to aim toward that uh, ideal. Um, for example, in Philippians 2 verse 5, Paul writes, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let this mind also be in you. It's like the water that I put into the glass. It becomes one. So when we put on the new man, we put on Christ. We are in him and he is in us. We uphold the new man by renewing our minds through submission to him. Until our mind and his are indistinguishable. The perfect unity. Now, as we strive after and work on that uh, ideal unity, we are at the same time to avoid and dismantle another unity, and that's the unity between the old man and the new man. Jesus makes clear to us that the old man and the new do not match. Jesus says in Mark, 21, uh, Mark 2, verse 21, No man also seweth a piece of new cloth on an old garment. Else the new piece that filleth it up taketh away from the old, and the rent is made worse. The new patch will eventually pull away from the old. We cannot patch the old man with new. Mix and match will not work. It is impossible because the two serve different masters. The old man and the new man represent opposite ways of life. Jesus makes that also clear in Matthew 6, verse 24, where he says, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. And Jesus adds a second example to illustrate the point in Mark uh, chapter 2, in verse 22. He says, No man put a new wine into old bottles, else the new wine doth burst the bottles and the wine is spilled, and the bottles will be marred. But the new wine must be put into new bottles. The new wine is spilled to the ground, lost forever, and the old wineskins burst and become useless. That's 
what happens when you try to mix the two. They're both lost. The old man and the new man are totally incompatible. They cannot be mixed. We must choose either the one or the other. The miracle that Jesus did in Cana, uh, the, that of turning uh, water into wine during the wedding feast, of which we can read in John chapter 2, um, was a miracle done by God through Jesus, as Jesus declares himself in uh, chapter 5, verse 19 of the Gospel of John. Um, the master of the feast, he is surprised when he tastes the wine. And um, he tells the bridegroom, you kept the good wine until now. The wine that God created was better than the old, the old wine that man created. I would say, the, of course. The new man is better than the old. And note in this parable, um, I'm not going to, in it too deep, I did this in another message in the past, but there are six pots of stone. Six represents the number of men. And note also that it had to be filled to the brim, completely, with water, which is a metaphor for the Holy Spirit. And note also that Jesus tells the servants to fill them. He does not do it himself. And we see that without human cooperation and consent, the new man cannot live. We have to put him on, and Dio. But the big surprise to all that are present at the wedding is that the new wine is much better than the old. With Jesus, everything is always better than before. This is the key word, better. It's not just good, it's not just different, it's better. Hebrews 7 verse 22 says, By so much was Jesus made surety of a better testament. And in Hebrews 8 verse 6, By now hath he obtained a more excellent, that is a better, ministry, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. Why stick with the old when something better is awaiting? Now, there seems to be a strange paradox. The story of the wedding in Cana tells us that new wine is better. But then Jesus tells us seemingly something different in Luke 5, verse 39. There he says, No man also having drunk old wine straightway desireth new. For he saith, the old is better. It seems paradoxical, but it is not. If you read carefully, Jesus does not say that the old is better. He says that man says the old is better. Human nature creates this paradox. When it comes to physical things, man is all too ready to embrace new things. New iPhone, new car, new clothes, new shoes, new whatever. But when it comes to spiritual matters, he rather sticks with the old, the old ideas. Uh, man is inclined to return to false doctrines, uh, false doctrines of Satan, uh, old lies, actually the same old lie that he, um, he uh, gave in the beginning in the Garden of Eden. It's like the dog who is returning to its vomit, as Peter writes. Man says the old is better. It is not put on the new man, but allows the old man to thrive. Our old nature, our natural inclination is always in the way. And we must overcome it. And we are not alone. Yes, of course, it's up to us to put on the new man, to clothe ourselves with Christ's mind. But it is Christ who clothes us with his Father's promise. The Holy Spirit. In Luke 24 verse 49 he says, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem, until ye be endued with power from on high. You will be endued with power, and this means you will be supplied with power. But it's obvious that the English word to endue 
comes from the Greek endio that I've used the past uh, three messages, including this one. Endio, which is to put on or to sink into. It's also to supply. And this is the only place uh, in, the, in the New Testament where the Greek word endio is translated with endio. But it is the power from on high that Jesus speaks of that enables us to discern and overcome Satan's deceptions and to walk in the new man's walk, the better way of life or the newness of life. However, it is up to us to empty our vessels and to allow it to be filled with water to the brim and he will change it into wine better than anything we have tasted before. Jesus living in us and through us, the perfect unity. Amen.